Hey everyone, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have a thrift haul and eBay haul to share with you all. I hope you all had a great 4th of July. I know I did. We got up extra early yesterday, and we hit a town-wide yard sale. I didn't pick up nearly as much because I was being picky, and there was just a lot of junk, a lot of overpriced stuff, and, you know, just the whole nine yards. It was a huge town-wide yard sale, which we will be definitely hitting more and more as the years go on. But this is going to be stuff that I've had sitting for a while. I just need to get it out of my room and packed up so I can clean in here because it's a nightmare. But I got a great deal of stuff from a bunch of different places, and I'm really, really excited to share it with you all. All right, so this I forgot in my last thrift haul. I, I don't really know why I picked it up, but I found it to be very fascinating. I don't know what year it's from. It's just a fifth grade math books, um, just like an education booklet. I just liked all the old fonts and stuff that were in it. It was buy two books, paperback, uh, kids books for 59 cents, so I grabbed another random book, chucked it, just to get this one for the 59 cents. Um, it doesn't say a year, but there are a lot of things that are in here that I wish books would have in modern day. Like, for example, they had a step-by-step -step on how to do lot, like a really long multiplication problem, like if you're going to do a thousand dollars or thousand times thirty-six, and it goes through step-by-step -step just to show you what you need to do in order to solve that problem. They didn't have that in books when I was growing up, at least I don't remember. But I would date this to probably the mid-60s or maybe even the 1970s, maybe. It says that the U.S. Office of Education was, this had, or was it by Irving Adler? And he became the state supervisor for education in June of 61. That's what it says in here. But yeah, that was a really, really cool pickup, I think. I don't know what I'm going to do with it again, but I just thought it was cool. Okay. From eBay, if you guys follow me on Instagram, which I hope you do, you guys probably already saw this. I've been talking about getting one of these for a couple of years now. This is the 1939-1940 Dr. Pepper serving tray. It's not Coke, but it's really, really neat, and the details are great. The only real flaw with it is the fact that the um, border is faded, and there's a little mark right here on the girl's face. I did pay 46 bucks for this, but I do think that was well worth it, because other ones were selling for over $100. This person had it up for about $54, their best offer, and I offered him 46 and he gladly accepted so I'm excited to own that, and I will eventually get one that's in better shape and sell this one. But hey, it's a good start, right? Especially since I haven't had one of these. Alright, now we're going to get into the thriftage. Right, I just can't remember what I got first, so I'm going to just kind of show you randomly. I uh, went down to the town that I used to live in, and I thrifted down there for the day while my, my, bleh, 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 while my mom worked. And the first place that I usually stop is the Salvation Army, because what I do is I usually work from the old town that we used to live in all the way down to where she works, so that way if, you know, I finish thrifting around the time that she gets off, I can just run right over to her workplace. So for $2.99, I found this um, elf head. It's ceramic. I know it's not handmade because it has a number on the bottom. It's red on the inside, so that makes me think there was a candle in it at one point or something of that nature. I had to pick it up because it's an elf, and I know this was probably done in Japan in the 60s, even though there's no Made in Japan sticker on it, and I paid a whopping $2.99 for that, so I was really, really excited to get him to add to my Christmas collection. Alright, let me just show you this one thing that I got at the Goodwill because it's sitting on my leg right now. So I got this really, really cool uh, mid-century cactus, um, I guess this is a platter, not a platter, but it's like a bowl of some sort, like you use it for chips. It's made by Treasurecraft in the United States, so this is an older piece. What era? Not exactly sure, but I know this was kind of a popular mid-century, um, I guess, item, like, or decor piece. This was $6.99 at Goodwill, although all purple tags were half off, so I got this for $3.50, and I think that's a really good deal. For $2.99... I got this bag, like sometimes, you know, Google will sell random grab bags of stuff. And the reason that I picked them up was because there are three of these duck chalkware figures in here. 
And let me take them out and show them to you since I'm not at the Goodwill anymore. They're at home. And these look to be in pretty darn good shape. I don't see a chip or anything on them. There's two of them. I think there was supposed to be a larger one for the mama, but that wasn't in here. Um, two ninety nine divided by th uh, four, so that's about three dollars each. So seventy five cents a piece. You can't really beat that. Um, in terms of what I think I can get for these, maybe I'll throw them up for twelve to fourteen dollars. Chalkware, if it's in good shape and it's sold in lots like this, especially if it's animals, will sell. And what also came in this bag was something that was very interesting, something I'd never seen before. And the Odagiri... Oh, here it is. I think it's old. It's a teddy bear. It's like really, really faded brown, and this was in there as well. It says Odagiri, Japan. This might be a $10 figurine. I'm not exactly sure. It just came in the... Uh, in the bag, so I'm gonna probably do some more research and just see, because sometimes this stuff can be 10, 12, 14 dollars, just depending on what it is. So I'm excited to get that. And if I do make more money on it than what those chocolate figures are worth, that's a whole a home run, don't you think? All right, went to my local Unique, and I was very, very good. They didn't have a lot of stuff that I was really looking for, but I did manage to find this in the homeware section. This is a Crazy Daisy uh, Pyrex butter dish. It was $2.99. Um, I guess these don't really go for all that much, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this up for $20 or best offer and free shipping. I think that might entice a buyer because this is pretty heavy, especially if you put it in a box. And it's in good shape. I don't see any fading or rubbing off of the pattern on here. So I think I can easily triple my money. I hope. Alright, I had seen this the last few times I had been to this one thrift store, and I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's really, really, like, hipster looking. It's a mug, and it's got these, just, they look like rocksters or like hippies or something like that, and on the back it's got this, um, another image. And they were originally two for $10, and I did think that was a lot. However, I still saw the mug there the last time I was there, and I was like, okay, you know what? It's still here. That means it was meant to be, even months after I had been there. So I decided to pop on it, and I looked for the other one. And apparently someone had either bought it, or they had gotten rid of it because the other one was in pretty bad shape. Like, the inside was all crazed and beat up and whatnot. So they may have decided just to chuck it because it was beaten up, and then I guess they didn't change the price on it. So I took it up to the cashier, and I said, hey, look, there was supposed to be two of these. I've seen them here before, um, and I only found this one out there. And she took it down half off and then gave me an extra 20%. So I only paid 4 bucks for this. So from 10 to 6, that's or 10 to 4, that's pretty good. And I think that would be just a cool piece to display, don't you think? I mean, because that's unusual. I've never seen anything like that before. So that's for me. Okay, so I stopped at a local antique shop that's, you know, around town. And the... I don't want to go into a rant because I've already been called out on this, but this is the hardcore truth. This one uh, item that I bought, which I'll get to in just a second, um, is from a guy who really prices his stuff to move. Like, some of his stuff is, like, a little bit pricey, but it's not like, oh my god, I shouldn't touch that, or oh my god, why does he want so much for that kind of a thing. We have, or I guess maybe you guys have seen it going into antique malls yourselves. Do you guys ever see booths that are just like jam-packed with stuff? Like literally there's stuff all over the floor. They got a bunch of stuff up, up to the ceiling. They've got odds and ends and then they're just ridiculously overpriced. Like over the top, like eBay times like three. Well, the gentleman who had that booth, that crazy overpriced booth was running the store for that day. I I I was claustrophobic and I was scared to death that I was going to knock over something because his stuff was pretty expensive. And just stuff that, even newer stuff that you could get at a flea market for like a dollar, he was charging like seven or eight dollars for. And again, I get it, you know, he's here to make money, but the way I see it, if you want a booth, you better price your stuff to sell. But I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. And then I was up at the front of the store, because the whole, it, 
if you guys have been to the store, I'm not going to tell you where it is, but it's really, really small, and it's two building. It's one big building, but there are two different stores. So one side is one owner, the other side is another owner, and it's kind of like a, a row. Like, you know how a, an aisle in a grocery store is? Like, it's just one big row, and then there's stuff that you can pick up. It's kind of like that, and there are a bunch of vendors, and the booths are really small, and he just, he jams it, he jams it with stuff, and I know he's gone to auctions, because we've seen him at some of them before, and, <laughs> funny story, I was up at the front, like I was saying before, and I was looking through one of the showcases, and I saw this, like, Victorian looking, like, paper doll set, I don't know what made me pick it up, but I just thought it was kind of interesting, and I just looked around and looked at it, they were all in a bag, so I turned around the packaging that it was in, and I see that they kept the original thrift store tag on it for $1.79. And then they put the price they wanted on it, $35. I'm like, you're not going to make any money that way. But yeah, that's my uh, little fun rant. But anyway, I managed to pick up this uh, Popeye Soki. If you guys don't know what Sokis are, they basically were figural um, plastic bottles that held soap. Like if you were going to go take a bubble bath or something as a kid, that's what these were. Um, for a while there, people were collecting them, and I guess the market just tanked, and they're very, very common, especially with, you know, the way the internet is nowadays. They're not as valuable. However, I didn't see this particular one when I was looking on eBay. I saw another one that my dad already has. So either I'm going to keep this for myself to go with my nautical-themed room, or I'm going to give it to my dad to display at one point. If you guys know anything about this, let me know, because... Like I said, the one that I saw on eBay was not this one, so this might be a rare find, or maybe an unusual piece. So this one is made by King Features Syndicate, Wolf Foam Corporation in New York. Let me see the back, or the bottom there, I hope it'll fit this. And I did pay up on it because, like I said, if you don't see it on eBay, that's probably a good sign. So I did pay the price of $7, because, like I said, if you don't see it on eBay, odds are that it's pretty rare, or there are not a lot of them out there, so, I mean, who knows? Okay. Oh, uh, yes, probably my favorite find from down at the uh, thrift stores in my old area. So, I was just about to leave, and they were still bringing stuff out, because I had gotten there really early in the morning. So... I'm just leaving, and then all of a sudden I see these on a cart. And I go over to look at them, and I'm like, oh, these are going to be like haul, or they're going to be not marked, or whatnot. But I turned them over, and let me take off the one price tag so you guys can see this, because I was pretty, pretty shocked when I found these. Can you guys read that correctly? That says Roseville, United States of America. These are, um, what was the name? If I had my phone, I would Google it real quick. I'll eBay it real quick. Sorry, guys, because I should have written this down. Being horrible. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's called a cornucopia base, I know that much. Let me see if I type in something else, it'll tell me what it is. Sorry. Oh, I can't remember what it was. I know there was one on here. I just can't remember the name of it. And it was the exact same one that I had found, too. Oh, here we go. So this is called It's called I don't know if it'll show up right here. Roseville Pottery Green Clematis Cornucopia Vase. 
And I got two of them, so I got a matching set. I was really, really excited to find these. I don't know what drew me to them, but I just really liked them. And the fact that they're Roseville Pottery. Have you ever found Roseville Pottery at a thrift store? Let me know in the comments. But I really, I fell in love with them. I love the color. I love that they are older. I'd probably date them to the 40s, 50s maybe. Roseville Pottery, like McCoy, all that stuff has really, really tanked in value. Because, you know, with the day and age of the internet, everybody has it. Then when the market's flooded, the value drops. Years ago, before the internet, I know this stuff was really, really hot, and people are trying to get their money back for what they spent years ago, but reality is, is it's not going to happen. With some things, yes, but not everything. The only minor detail that I noticed when I bought them was that there's a slight little chip on the flower petal. I don't know if it's going to show up or not, but... I only paid $3.99 each for these, so that's $8 for the set. That's an insanely good deal for Roseville, considering I've never seen it at the thrift store. So I had to have these when I saw them, so I thought that was a really, really good deal. Okay, alright, what else did I get? Now, you guys know I've been kind of on the hunt for those baby planters, because at one point someone does buy them. But this one I actually picked up for myself because I really, really liked the colors. I loved the animals that are on it. It is made by Relpo in Japan. It was $1.61. It's got different animals on each side. It's like a block. I just thought that was super, super cool. Very whimsical. I might just display that. I'm not exactly sure. Or maybe I'll sell it at one point. But I thought it was really, really cool looking. And there's not a crack in it. And the paint on here is pretty good. Alrighty. I wish I could take all these out of here, but I'm not going to for time's sake. This is a West Point cast aluminum canister set. There are four pieces in here, and I paid $8 for them. I'm going to clean them up, maybe with some barkeeper's friend. I'm going to have to look on the packaging again and see if it's safe with aluminum and metals. If not, I'm just going to sell them as is. I might throw it up on eBay for $30 to $35. And that'll be an easy shipper, because all you got to do is throw it in a box. Maybe I'll put some bubble wrap in between just to make sure they don't clasp together and potentially um, dent the aluminum. But this is what the graphic looks like on there. It's just like a Western theme. Somebody is going to absolutely love these. I'm, I doubt, don't doubt that. Okay, so let's get into the stuff that I picked up while I was out and about last weekend. Let me start with the... Oh, no, there's one more piece from the thrift that I want to share with you all from down where I used to live. It's all discombobulated in here. Okay, so this is going to be given to my aunt. I'm going to see them in a few weeks because I leave for my beach vacation, which I'm really, really excited to take. So I would date this to probably the 1970s. I think it was originally a flower pot or like an insert to hold a flower pot. It's that really, like... I wouldn't say avocado green, but it's kind of like a light green, like that 70s, I, I don't know what color to describe that as. But this was a whopping 99 cents, and then take 20% off of that, so I paid about 81 cents for this. I'm sure she's going to love it. I have a whole bag of stuff that's full of 70s things that I'm thinking she's going to absolutely love. Okay, so that's everything that I got while I was back down in my old town thrifting. Now we can jump into the stuff that I picked up just fairly recently. Where to start, I don't remember, or don't know where to. Oh yes, I'm sure you guys have seen that I picked up one of these. I'm gonna gather up a bunch of these little um, Fenton hobnail, well it's not Fenton, but hobnail votives with the grommets, because if you find these and you have them in a lot, people will buy them for crafting or for their candelabras. I paid a whopping quarter for that, and the other one I bought also cost me a quarter, so I'm only in them for 50 cents. If I find four or more, I can easily sell them for 25 to $30. Oops. Now, I've had a lot of remorse about some of the figurines that I showed you all in one of my last videos. Um, I just... I. I looked at some of them and I was like, what was I thinking? Why was I accumulating all these? I'm not gonna, you know, try to be a junk heap like I already am, or a junkaholic, but 
I just got to be better with what I'm buying, and I had really bad remorse with some of that. Some of that stuff that I did show you all, I did keep, but some of it I was like, what am I doing? And we are going to have a garage sale uh, in August, so I can always put those out there and charge 50 cents to a dollar a piece on them and make some of my money back, I guess. But this I absolutely had to have. This is a planter, and I think it's Mickey. And he's holding a flower. That only cost me $1.50. There are no marks on it, but I thought it was really, really cool, and it's also all crazed up, but I love that. And there's barely any color left in him, but I, like I said, I'd never seen that before, so I definitely snatched that up. Something that I probably should not have bought because they just don't sell like they used to. I remember my dad picked up one of these at a thrift store years ago, and I think he sold it for a good price, but... As time went on and the internet became a thing, you know, everything changes with that. This is probably from the 70s or the 80s. It's a bake-around um, bread dish. I paid $1.50 for it, and they don't really sell for that much on eBay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it in our yard sale, and I'm going to sell it for 5 bucks and get my money back and make a little bit off of that. Okay. Oh, yes. Two of my other favorite things that I found were 75 cents, or no, 50 cents and 75 cents. So, a couple years ago, I actually found a ceramic pixie or elf, um, and I sold it online for like two bucks, and now I'm, either I regret it or I was kind of like, no, I didn't really need it at the time, but I found these guys, and they cost me, what's 75 and 50, so... Paid a dollar twenty-five for the both of them. I got one in red and I got one in green, and I love them. So I can't wait to put those up. Maybe around Christmas time, because red and green, you know, Christmas. For oh, this is another really cool find. I try to steer away from alarm clocks and things like that, but if the graphics on them are really cool, I will pick them up. Like this one, I'm about to show you. This one is made by Gilbert. Sorry about the glare, guys. But look at the font of those letters. Isn't that really cool? Um, in terms of the date, I'm not exactly sure. I would say anywhere from the 1930s through the 1960s. I only paid two fifty dollars for it. I just love the, the glass and the, the font, the lettering. I mean, we don't make things like this anymore. So this will be another good addition to my bedroom. Don't know why I bought this, but I did. Um, this is a Whitman Extra Large Donkey Party game. I would date it to probably the 1960s, possibly. It's made by Whitman Publishing Co. in Racine, Wisconsin. And it does have the original poster, and all of the tales are there. Let me show you guys the poster. It's really, really cool. Isn't that awesome? That might be just something fun to hang up when you're hosting a party or something. I don't know. And the fact that it has the original box, that makes it even cooler. For 90 cents, I picked something up that I'm going to be sending to Miss Stone Home for her assemblage. This is a quick planting seed tape. I guess you put it on a, in a pot full of dirt and it grows the seeds. For 90 cents, I thought that was really cool. There is no mark on it. It says, American Seed Corporation, New Haven, Michigan, finest quality seed since 1897. So this packaging, to me, looks like it's from the 60s or the 1970s, possibly. But I couldn't pass that up for Miss Stone Home for 90 cents. So I decided to pick that up. I'm just going to have to be really careful getting that label off because they taped it to the box for the packaging. Last piece from the antique store that I got the um, seat thing in is this um, really cute left-in figurine with a bluebird on it. And the girl looks like she's playing a trumpet. And I think that's really, really adorable. And I know that Garland Girl 21 will really like this. This is a left-in figurine. I only paid a buck for it. Actually, I paid 90 cents for that. No cracks or chips on her. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to send that up to her immediately. So that way she can enjoy it, because I know she's been getting those left in figurines on eBay and paying like 10, 12 bucks. So if I can help her out by finding her something cool, I will send that up to her. 
Okay. Last three pieces for this haul video, and I've been talking for 24 minutes. I'm so sorry. I got really lucky at one of the um, charity thrift stores. Actually, no, this one's from um, the Salvation Army as well. I forgot about it. It's a yellow refrigerator dish. I'm going to, of course, have to clean it because it is very, very dirty. It was $2.50, the most expensive of the ones I'm going to show you. So had I stayed at the Goodwill less, I would have gotten these other items. They were two Jedi bowls, and when we were talking about, you know, vintage dishes and just certain antique stores in the area and saying how bad their prices are and just people are outrageous with their pricing and, you know, just the whole spiel. So she picked up two Jedi bowls, and she paid 85 cents for them. I would have probably sold those for at least 20 to 40 bucks online, but can't win them all, right? But I did manage to score something. I'm going to have to clean them, of course, but I got a red refrigerator dish, and these are all without lids for 50 cents. And what's funny is I actually went to the Salvation Army and I found the exact same one in worse shape, but they were asking the same price. But I didn't want to buy one that was in bad shape. And then I also got one in blue. And I love my blue Pyrex when I can find it for cheap. That was 75 cents. Cannot beat that for Pyrex dishes. So yeah, that's everything that I wanted to share with you all in this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on other social media platforms like Instagram. All that is in the description box as well. If you haven't clicked the bell next to the subscribe button to know when I put out new videos, go ahead and do that because I got a couple new videos on the way. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.